Welcome everyone and uh, thank you for joining us tonight for an evening of music with KJ Benner. My name is Joyce Sherrock Cole. I am the village historian and board member of Bethany Arts Community as well as the curator of the Austin and Black History and Culture exhibit at Bethany Arts Community. And before we begin, I want to just share with you the mission of Bethany. I, I just love this place. Um, the mission is to create a space and environment where the, the many forms of art can be learned, produced, and flourish. Artists of all ages and levels of experience are welcome to explore and create art that the community can experience and be engaged in while enhancing their perception and perspective of the world. Bethany Arts Community aims to inspire sharing, connection, and collaboration in a culture designed for the benefit of the local community and beyond. Just fabulous. Bethany is just an amazing place to be. I'm just going to add that on. It's not there in the, in the mission, but it should be. It's amazing. So before we begin, I want to thank our sponsors, Craven Jamaican and Austin Innovates. Without further ado, I present to you all K.J. Denner, award-winning songwriter, guitarist, vocalist, and band leader. And you're in for a real treat. That's my add-on. I'm ready. <laughs> so Sister Songs, Pandemic Reflection, K.J. Denner. Hello. You say you don't believe in war But brother, neither do I And you say you don't believe in war Sister, neither do I Oh, if you don't choose a weapon War will choose a weapon for your child. War takes your hard earned money and builds another bomb. Oh, oh, war takes your hard earned money. Builds another bomb, another bomb. Oh, oh, if you don't choose a weapon, one will choose a gun for your son. You son of a tattoo. Choose your weapon, choose your weapon, no. One will choose again for everyone. Choose your weapon, your God given weapon. Uh, one will choose a gun for your son. Send it up to do as it. Could be a microphone or the power of the pen. You, you weapon could be so check that you're right to the brotherhood of men. You weapon could be your intellect. Come on and use it, use it, use it. Believe in war. 
And you say you don't believe it won't Sister, neither do I I Oh, if you don't choose a weapon One will choose a gun For your son Son, it a tattoo Choose your weapon Choose your weapon or one will choose a gun for everyone. Choose your weapon. God given weapon now. Uh, one will choose a gun for your son. Son, you don't have to do as it. you start KJ uh, <laughs> uh, the best compliment I could give you is I'm ready to throw my shoe at you you know and that's good to take right. your shoe off and throw it <laughs> hey, <come laughs> <the> shoe. <laughs> that was fantastic um, thank you there's so many places I want to start with you because after hearing that piece I want to know how you got to that piece and what you were speaking to but I want to talk about that first before we go into to your history and how you got here because I really that piece was amazing Okay, well, the piece was a collaboration, and it, it's funny. It was a collaboration with a guy named Johnny Witter, and we used to meet up in New Pulse in a songwriting group that read it, met at 9 in the morning. I thought there was nothing more corporate than that. And Johnny wrote a song called Choose Your Weapon, and he wrote a blues song, and he was inspired by Gay Adigbola. And uh, she's from a group called uh, the Uppity Blues Women. And uh, this concept of, you know, choose a weapon before a weapon chooses you. So Johnny wrote a blues tune, and I thought that the, the message of the tune uh, needed a, a wider, a broader palette. And I thought of how you get so much longer to use a lyric over uh, a reggae tune. Nice. So I took it, I added a few words, but... It's definitely an inspiration from Gay, uh, lyrics by Johnny, and music by me with a little tiny massage here and there. Fantastic collaboration. I mean, I was jamming over here, and it has you quite reflective. You're thinking, and you're really thinking on the words, but then you can't stop moving. That's why I want to throw that shoe at you. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. Thank you. Uh, so if we go back a little, can you just talk about um, growing up and, and how you got your uh, your start in music? Um, I grew up, I was born in Brooklyn mm -hmm. and uh, we moved to the Bronx. I always thought I could play. I told my mother, get me a piano. I know when the notes go up, and when they go down, but I didn't know how, how much else that was involved in it. And eventually I, I found a guitar that my brother cast aside. I tuned that up and started playing when I was 10. And I'm in my 60s, so um, I thought I'd be a lot better by now. <laughs> and you are fantastic. Thank you. Thank fantastic. you. No, my hair, I go fishing. Fishing. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, music, I'm definitely self-taught. Uh, it wasn't, I was. it was expected of me that I would be able to play. But not uh, my mother when I was 11 and I had I had um, calluses on my fingers from practicing. She says, me boys aren't going to want to hold your hand. And I remember looking at her. So this is about 1971 or two, you know, and it's like, oh, OK. I'll, I'll, <laughs> duly noted, you know, a lot was changing. I grew up in uh, 60s, 70s, and the world saw a lot of change. So you said that you were expected to play well. Uh, why were you expected to play well? Because my grandmother and all of her brothers and sisters were musicians. Gotcha. And then 
um, yeah, that, that's that's the main reason why. Were they your um, inspiration? Did do you pull from um, their influence when you make pieces or when you play? No, I didn't get. To, I lived, um, I lived so far away mm -hmm. from uh, from them. So, uh, but when I heard my grandmother play the piano, uh, you know, I certainly was interested. Yeah, it was. It, it's hard to explain that. It was just like, oh yeah, well, every if you play, it's like, oh well, everybody in the family does. But then when you go to play, it's like you're going out to play in a club. <laughs> so it was always a mixed message, right? Early right. on, early always on. depression, right? <laughs> to do it and do it well. If you're gonna go out, you gotta excel, right? No, no, it wasn't. It was like do it, but do it at home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do it when my friends come over, so I can say do it. But then don't don't do it when I don't need you to do it. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. When did you come to Osney? I started playing at Danny's, um, probably ninety nine, ninety eight, ninety nine, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, and yeah, Danny's was new when. Um, I started playing, uh, I think it was Tuesday nights, and then it was Thursday nights, and I got to know people here, and then I eventually met uh, Lisa, and um, we live together now, and I live in Austin since 2004, I think. Okay. Something like that, yeah. So I still consider myself uh, a new a new guy. Okay. Not a guy, but you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Well, thank you, Lisa, <laughs> bringing her ear, um, because I, when I first heard you, I mean, I was so moved. I told you after that, I mean, just so moved by your playing. So if you wouldn't mind uh, gracing us with some more music. Sure, I'm going to play a song. This one hasn't been released. I have a whole bunch of songs that are coming out. And um, growing up in the Bronx, um, I went to a school that was considered tough school I think it was tougher for boys but you know I I had a you had to stand up for yourself yeah. uh, in in this school and um, this is called we were diamonds <laughs> Diamonds We We were diamonds We were diamonds They were rough Girls are mean Boys were tough Junior high, I learned to tell those girls, oh, enough's enough. Willie had a sense of humor, and he took to for a little guy. Willie did the mess around. Willie made us laugh until we cried. I cried when I got home and I tried I tried to be stronger sun comes up to light the world light the world up for another day hey hey, hey. Karen left her pen in science oh she got caught down the wrong hallway Push and shove she would not budge Even when her friends all ran away Hey, hey. Then one day Willie got thrown out of chorus He got caught messing around that day No one else seemed to notice much How I wish that Willie would have stayed
parents, they came from an island. And they grew up 3,000 miles away. And I could speak the way they spoke. Junior high hid myself away. And I cried. Now I got home. And I tried, tried to be stronger. Sun comes up to light the world. Light the world up for another day. We were diamonds. We were diamonds. Oh, my goodness. I think that speaks to like every kid in us that ever went to school and had to deal with anything. And I think a lot of kids today could just identify with what you spoke to in that song. That was gorgeous. Thank On top you. of the way you sing, um, your delivery, your tone, uh, just the message, I, I think speaks to a lot of people. Um, it felt really good. It felt like uh, the kid in us was able to to speak out uh so thank you for doing that thank you <laughs> that was um, junior high school 125 in the bronx on bugsley avenue okay so you made it out <laughs> you made it out yeah yeah it um i mean they turned out to be some really great years good. uh and i i made some good friends mm -hmm. um and actually the all those names of willie willie was really a, a real person and he really was in chorus. Oh wow! And, um, I came home, and I said to my parents, "Oh, Willie got, Willie was messing around." And my father was like, "We don't say messing around." And it's like, since when? <laughs> there was, there was a lot going on in those days. They, uh, everybody was afraid that, you know, this little bunch of kids. We had this special program that they sent, that you know, my I guess my parents were afraid I would start speaking poorly or something okay. and uh and the uh left my pen in science that is something on the first day of junior high school one teacher you know we were now moving from class to class and he goes don't come in here saying i left my pen in science which i thought was the funniest thing i'd heard and for the rest of my life mm -hmm. when uh i use that line just all the time when i think someone's treating me like i'm a child or I was uh, at a studio in an old school, and I had to leave the studio to uh, to go find my makeup or something. And as I walked out, I go, I left my pen in science. And they got it, because we were in a school. Right. Anyway. <laughs> um, uh, so what were your uh, some of your early, early musical uh, influences? Well, you know, I'm the same age as Michael Jackson, Prince, and Madonna. I don't know if you see a little pattern there, yes, yes. who's um, still around. So, I mean, I loved Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. I loved the Carpenters. And, uh, yeah, who, when I f first started hearing music, I liked every, I liked, um, on the, the first thing that I really got hooked on was the flip side of the Christmas song by the Chipmunks. Really? Dave Seville had a song called That's Almost Good. I wish I was a better um, piano player. Mm -hmm. I would play it for you, but uh, yeah, it, it's a, you, if you look, you can look up Dave Seville or Alvin and the Chipmunks. I remember. Al, almost Good. Mm -hmm. You can find it on YouTube. I'm going to do that. And it was this little <laughs> ba -doom, boom, ba -doom, doom, boom, ba -doom, boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 and I would dance, you know, just with the me and the record player. We were, we were close. Good. So when when you when you're creating, does this live in your soul? Like you can hear a fire engine, but you can hear a rhythm in the fire engine going by. Like is that how, some you, how deeply you connect? Mm -hmm. Some some things, yeah. You know, I I I 
I hear a lot a lot of stuff and um, unfortunately I get a little busy I get a little busy in my head you know uh, I, I see a lot of I see a lot of things I see a lot of irony in how we're uh, hanging out so I see a lot of irony how we're hanging out. I, I, it's like, what the hell does that mean? That means the world is gone nutsoid. Okay. I'm gonna agree. People, <laughs> I'm gonna agree. people are just lying, 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 lying. But now it's like, no, my my dog told me to get on this plane, and I didn't feel bad about it till I had my first margarita. It's like, no, no. So yes, I think the world has gone a little, a little wild. And, so do you um, use your music um, to to react to it? Absolutely. Yeah. I've always used my music to um, to really to talk to myself, to remind myself okay. of what's important and um, which you know with with this period uh, of n not working, uh, I feel like my whole, relationship with time has changed mm -hmm. you know and it's like well i got to do this but i don't have enough time and now i have so much time but you can have so much time that you you still don't have time because there's always there's always laundry to do and there's always gas you can put in the car and groceries but i need i do i need i need time with uh, my thoughts and and i've seen i've i've seen so much this year with this extra time um, that looking back, the first couple of weeks, I couldn't look at the commercials on television okay. in the pandemic because I felt like that's the old world. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this new world is going to be. Right. You know, it, it's changed. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so that brings us to, and I agree, your re pandemic reflections, uh, the sister songs. Um, before you play again, can you just quickly tell us that, or if you feel like if you feel so That's, you go into it, uh, some more of it. Um, I I already have the guitar on that I need for oh, the sister song. That was we're ready. ready. We're yeah, ready. We're today. Feeling it. We're just yeah, we're there. So, um, as I got a little older, when I was in the seventh grade, I got a, a Joni Mitchell record, and um, I thought then. I realized I, I thought she was a genius then and I and I still do uh, and she was a great lyric writer which has always been a bigger challenge for me than music I hear the music the words are where the, the work has to come in but um, over time uh, it, it it works so this story this is definitely one of the sister songs I never had a sister um, I guess I kind of wanted one in retrospect I, I did okay I, my brother set me up for how the world really is so it's good to have that training um but this song i don't actually i don't want to tell you what it's about because it's going to be i think it's going to be pretty obvious but this is one of my sister songs it's called postcards from paris it's my newest song and On my kitchen table, a postcard from Paris, trifolded city map of Kathmandu. Drumming a red fingernails on the table, distractedly watching the evening Final call, flight 57, now boarding gate 22. I'll call you when I get there, as I always do. Time is the constant that slips out the back door. I dialed her telephone and charged it to my room. Hearing the 
voice she saves for overseas calling I hear her smile tell me Carrie where are you when you play are people dancing the way that we used to do even though she is asking I promise she won't recall I fly home in June Fly away Jack Fly away Jill Come back Jack If you will There on the table Two cold presidentes A couple chance to dance just this afternoon Oh, what a chance Farewell, little island To wind up singing in your Crown Heights living room Final call, flight 57 Now boarding at gate 22 Memories of my mother Are you calling me? Or am I calling you? Fly away Jack Fly away Jill Come back Jack If you will Remember me this way. Wow, wow. Um, when you play, like when I hear music, you know, I want to sing along. I literally feel like I'm watching a movie and listening to music at the same time. Ooh. I don't know how you managed to do that, <laughs> KJ. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm watching a movie. I've, I really don't experience that often uh, when I'm listening to music that I actually feel like I'm watching a movie in my head as I'm listening to this tune. It's just quite beautiful to bring that scenery to, to music. Um, that's a great that's, compliment. That's a I, I don't know how to thank you. Um, yeah, no, that, that is very sincere. I really feel like I just watched a movie. It was beautiful. Um, did you want to talk about the, um, composing that piece? Or like you said, it's, um, it's therapeutic, almost cathartic for you when you're composing. And I never think about that. It's, it's cathartic to the listener, but I never think about the composer. Um, so if you could talk about your composition well, of that. Well, this one, one of the things that was happening with my new relationship with time, and I lost my mother in 2016. So it's been, Sorry. Uh, think, it's going to be five years this year. And over time, um, you know, we had a somewhat contentious relationship, um, but uh, there certainly, you know, are ways and that, and a lot of things that she taught me. And I feel that with each year, her memories speak to me in different ways. But I lost both of my parents. It's funny, my father, I, I experienced my my dad uh, with a certain scent. And it's like, oh, my dad's here. With my mom, I just get these, um, I get these messages. And uh, it gets, they get easier. And I guess that's what this, this song is saying, you know, it's like, are you really speaking to me? Is it my memory? And like, are you calling me or am I calling calling you back? And, you know, of course, your parents always say like, you'll be my age one day. And now, mm -hmm. now I am. So it's like, oh, look at this. So mom was right. Mom was right. <laughs> sure. She was right about a lot of things. She taught me to read, you know, 
yeah. when I was really, really young, and she was new to this country, so I was her, I was her company. So what country did she come from? She came from Grenada, as did my father, and all of my family. So um, that's what um, farewell little island to wind up. So they went from Grenada to Aruba, mm -hmm. and then on a, a kind of on a whim from Aruba to. New York, though they thought they were going to L.A., okay. um, and they never got there. So we started. Did they have out... big dreams to go there? To sure. LA? Yeah, my mom liked singing and dancing, and you know, but this the world that they came they came here in the nineteen fifties, and uh, so it was a, a slightly different world. And coming from Grenada, uh, they didn't understand, and there's a bit of a gift in that. They didn't understand okay. what was going here, going on, you know, and um, so it gave it gave me and us a great perspective. Um, a good thing, being a first generation American, at least we spoke English, you know. Um, okay. Living in the Bronx, though, you don't know how many people um, would lecture me about not learning my tongue, my native tongue. You know, it was just okay. assumed I spoke Spanish. You know, if I was in the Bronx anyway. Um, so, yeah, all the good and all the bad, and you put it all together, and um, that's life. And no, I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it. But, but can I ask you one question while we're connecting it to um, Black history and culture, and we won't stay there a long time, um, but just how you saw um, when you got here or when you started growing up or if they, your parents ever mentioned um, what it was like coming here and um, I don't know what they look like. Did they look African-American or, you know, did they look like, you know, what, which way they were looking and how they were perceived and how they um, got, got along here. Okay. Um, we all kind of look like me and mm -hmm. in the West Indies um, on both sides of my family, uh, our bloodlines were, were mixed. Right. So um, to say that my mother probably could have, the word was pass. Mm -hmm. um, she probably could. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that I would never, ever want that. Mm -hmm. I didn't learn that at home. I learned that in school. In the 1960s, mm -hmm. uh, I was brought up by card-carrying liberals and some right-minded and some good people. Mm -hmm. And that was a, an amazing thing to get the education that I did in public school. Um, my father was a happy man. And he told me one story that I think stays with me. There was one time he came to this country and he got a job and he used to work for, I think it was Best Coat and Apron. I, I don't know what this, this company was, um, but one of his bosses asked him to drive a car to Boston, and it was a standard, and he'd never, I don't know what it is, and he had a tough time, but he got the car there, mm -hmm. and he came back, and he was going to talk about, you know, driving the highway and la, 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 and then he said, uh, when he came back, the, the man who was his boss handed him a wad of cash, and where my parents come from, if somebody offers you money, like oh no no I you know I'm happy to do my job and he said no oh please no I, I'm happy to do you know to do my job that's the culture that he comes from right and uh, what happened is the guy said you don't want my money you, you, you don't need my money we'll see you later and he got fired oh wow, oh, wow. That's yeah great. He didn't tell that story with like, you know, complete like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. But he told the story like, be careful. Mm -hmm. Watch. Yes. Um, Thank you for sharing that. Sure. I, I love hearing stories of, um, of people's family and how they grow up. I, I think it helps with everyone in, in getting uh, some empathy and, and understanding of other people and we might all look similar or different, but all of our stories are different um, and the shape who we are today. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, you know, the, the problem for me is I could go on for, for hours and 
you know, a place like the the West Indies and the the culture, it's different. It's not necessarily better. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily based on solely on the color of your skin, you know. But then there's a whole class system and what family and you, you, I've seen. I've seen so many cultural analogies in traveling in this country. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily, in my early days, I got to, I got to be in in Korea and um, be in a lot of different cultures, you know. And you see how, how we can attach so much meaning to a word. Uh, I was watching you today, and um, the young man said, "You know, you can say one word mm -hmm. and lose everything." That's right. And that's always been the way, but the culture determines what are those words. Absolutely. And what, with, even with that, Gavin is a wonderful uh, young man. Yeah. Um, yes. Could you lead us into some more of your beautiful words? Your song. <laughs> <laughs> Here in Austin, a good friend of mine is Annie Carpenter. And we were writing songs last year, and this one is the one I am most proud of. She had some notes in her in her journal. And together we sculpted the first of the sister songs. This is called nice. Singer of Sorrow. Like a still life before me, poet and a playwright, sunlight through the trees. You might as well speak your piece. Singer of sorrow, understand. Plot. Oh, we're all just trying to get by, get by, falling like some fallen angel, poet in the square with his feet to the fire. Fallen like some fallen angel You might as well let me love you keeps you on your toes and uh -huh. take your down and then you're up you're excited and you're really it really puts you in that pocket i'd love 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 that 
Thank um, you. It, it just took you there. I, that pickup, I was trying to, I told you I was going to contain myself, KJ. I wasn't going to throw my hands up in the air. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you so much. Yeah, Do you have time yeah. for any more? Or am I, am I playing any more for you today? Or? Play, go ahead. I'm not going to stop you from playing. <laughs> go ahead and play. You have time. Cool. Um, what was I going to play for you? You got a, a comment here, KJ. Just beautiful. Hey, Henry. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's a new one. I had some, I have some more sister songs coming that that are gonna go with that. Very nice. Hey, Rob, wow. I just saw Rob Sheps' name. Okay. So let me see if I can set up something over here. Because... While we're waiting and you're setting up, if you have any questions for KJ, throw them in the chat or the Q&A, and I'll, I will ask KJ. Okay. Let's see what the tempo is. This could be right there, right? Yeah. Um any questions? No. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Everyone says they're loving it. Hey Barb. There's so many great musicians in town. Barb Merch and fabulous drummer. We met in Ithaca in the 70s and then wound up in the same town. That's so cool. This is part of a suite from an album called uh, Lucky Seven. I was playing in the past in a cardboard box of photographs with a dog-eared black and white of you. The world was new. Boys and girls walked two by two, swearing I would be first fly to the moon. I can see your face Oh, and feel your laughter too We laughed, we smiled We told each other lies Invented ways See if we could get ourselves a rise We'd dance, we'd sing Sure that we knew everything Built a fortress that was true. <laughs> I haven't played this. Oh, we laughed, we smiled, we told each other lies, invented ways. Ooh, to see if we could get ourselves a rise We'd dance, we'd sing Sure that we knew everything We built a fortress that was true Oh, 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 
You better get up, get up, get up, get it straight. Everyone will be on time, but you will be late. Get up, get up, clean your plate, mister. I said everyone will be on time, you'll be late. never seems to make much sense I thought I knew you better till I got your letter left me left me left me sitting on the fence yeah what's my name tell me what is my story what is my name Glory, glory, glory. What's my name? Tell me what is my story, story, story. What is my name? Hey, Jay, that shoe is coming back at you. Shoe on that shoe at you. <laughs> I don't have no more shoes on. <laughs> we have a couple of questions for sure. you. Um, how has the pandemic uh, impacted your composing? And has it changed the music or lyrics that you're writing? Um, Singer, uh, Singer of Sorrow was written just before, but um, a little, I think that the song from my mom, Postcards from Paris, mm -hmm is one of my clearer songs um and that's sort of the the latest and i maybe i'm pulling from a um i didn't think i could pull any further in the well than than i am but uh, and also um i'm in here uh, even though i have all this tech around me i've really been uh learning to i've been learning teaching myself logic and t just trying to learn to do new things and playing, you know, Sudoku and just anything to to stay uh, vibrant. Right. And I stopped. I stopped eating as much sugar in You're January. Cute. We'll see what will happen. Teach us that secret sauce. Because <laughs> we don't. I need that secret sauce. How'd you figure that out? Well, all right. You know what I did. One thing that I thought was kind of I, I wanted to get stop drinking coffee with sugar and I used to get this big mug and I would um it was like a latte and we have it frothed milk and um I decided I wanted to make it fun to have coffee at least I found these little demi task cups okay and so and two of them with these little this little til silver tea service to do a shot of coffee with some steamed milk I didn't miss the sugar that much Very and nice. so I tried to make it like something to look forward to instead of something I couldn't have. That's really good. That's it was. Good. That's really good. Yes. <laughs> um, so we have another uh, question. Yeah. So you had a song uh, writing with a friend in New Paltz. Um, Abe Speller is wondering if uh, she still lives there because that's he used to hang there. Um, it was Johnny Witter. And so, yeah, he still lives there. And uh, Sharon White was in that group and Vicki Russell were some of the people, but yeah, it was it was just a, a bunch of people that got together, um, and you know, I we should start that. Abe, if you ever want to start a, you know, a song share, that would be that was a really cool thing to do. Okay, so we have a, another question. Um, Sandy Gelliff is asking, are you planning any outdoor concerts for the spring or summer? Um, the summer is, I think, up in the air. You know, we'll have to see what the 
what the directives are from the state. Um, I used to play every other Saturday at a little bar in Manhattan called the 55 Bar. Mm -hmm. And that's a very small club capacity of like 90 people. And once they closed down, um, that you know, I, I don't know if they've been able to open yet or if they're going to. So I'm starting an online series to get through spring. I'm starting to do some um, live gigs, but for every other Saturday, like I used to do, uh, there's going to be a live stream uh, called the Love Stream, and I'm bringing the whole band. We're going to get out of my living room. I'm happy. I'm happy by myself here, or sometimes as a duo. But I need to play with the band and play the new songs with them, and I need to get back to um, the land of of my life. So I'll look for that at kjdennert.com, and I'll be advertising that. We'll be looking. Um, so we have an, another question for you. Sure. Uh, you know, you're playing alone today, but um, how do you find your band members? Um. I found my band members very slowly by going out to hear people. Mama Duba, I can tell you the day I heard him playing with Jen Chapin. I can tell you he was wearing some sandals. I watched how he tapped his foot and I wanted to play with him. And we started playing together actually in 1996. Uh, Ray Levere, the drummer. Uh, mm -hmm. We met in a band working for a friend of mine uh, named Jennifer Levy. And one of the great things that I did, like if, if I was younger and open mics, uh, there were open mics going on at um, a place called Downtime. I met a lot of songwriters. I saw a lot of uh, different people. And so um, the first drummer was Dan Hickey, uh, a really great drummer, toured with B-52s. And then I was playing with Swiss Chris, who also played with uh, Jen Chapin great drummer and then Ray came along uh, and Ray has uh, stayed since 97 so he was the new guy in 97 <laughs> um, yeah you go out you hear people and I'm very slow to to add people so I have three different bands right now but they all play in each other and I'm bringing them all uh, in March and April I have a jazz project where we do my music and some standards. I have a trio where we play it more acoustically and then I have the band since 90, 96 called the New York Unit and uh, I'm bringing our sax player and guitar player and so. The last part of this question says, does Mama Do ever smile? <laughs> it's funny, you know, the first year I was like, I, I didn't know if I wanted to go on the road with him because I felt like he's like so serious and he does. He looks like. Uh, and then once I saw him with his friends, like Richard Bona and, you know, some African guys, and he's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. I was like, who's this guy? And um, then we started traveling uh, together. We we all went to Senegal to his homeland to play. I think that was in 2018. And what a great adventure it was. And the only co cool thing, Mamadou went first and he was waiting for us and he organized that so it wasn't on me and when I got there he was like a maniac I didn't know where you were and I was calling the hotel and I was like oh <laughs> isn't that something what it's like when you're running the show anyway he didn't think it was as funny but yes he does smile and um he's a brilliant man brilliant brilliant man so thank you for that so KJ, we're coming on the end of the hour. I just listening to you play, I can't believe that happened so fast, but can you tell uh, the listeners how to follow you so we can you know, follow what you're doing, what projects you're working on, what your social media is? Okay. I need social media help. So if anyone is within my earshot, I have been really struggling, I've, but um, I will, kjdenhurt.com always has the upcoming shows. When, they're, when they are, and when the links are. Um, my Facebook is really me. Um, Instagram, I try to get there, and I'm trying to keep up and release some new songs and really getting ready for these uh, four shows so um, that are coming up. 
And I am going to be in Pittsfield, Mass, doing a live show with the trio. Uh, so, yeah, kjdenhurt.com. Thank you, KJ. This has been amazing. I've been waiting for this. I've been waiting, 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 because I love how you play. I love the energy you give off, and it just is a journey. It's uh, mutual, Joyce. Thank I you. love your energy, and your, <laughs> your you. talk today at the library was um, really outstanding, and I'm glad that I, I got in there. Thank I'm going to follow you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so we thank everybody for joining us. This is the last week of the Austin Black History and Culture exhibit at Bethany. Uh, the last day is Friday. Please continue to watch what KJ is doing. Go on this adventure I go on every time I listen to her. I love it. Uh, so KJ, if you don't mind giving us a little tune to get, send us out, we'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, Craven Jamaican and Austin Innovates. And as always, thanking Bethany Arts community for what all that they do for this community. And KJ, if you could take it away, thank you for blessing us this evening. I don't know why I played this. I didn't write this. Sugar. Call my baby sugar, never may be my sugar, that sugar baby of mine, he's confectionery, funny, he never asks me for money, all I give him is honey, that he can spend any time. I'd make a million trips to his lips if I was a honeybee because he's sweeter than chocolate candy to me. He's confectionery. That's how you take it out, KJ. <laughs> Thank you for coming, everyone. KJ, thank you very much. Thank you, Joyce. Thank I'll be in touch. Thank you. Good okay. night, everyone. Bonsoir.